getting Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth on AFR Talk. So, Gina McCarthy, what were you doing? The Backstreet? What's going on? Welcome back. Great to be with you. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, part two of what we just spoke about with, with Cheryl Atkinson. Well, she was actually giving a lecture, and we played a clip from it and put together some clips. Wonderfully produced by our good friend, Jeremy. I want to say Jeremiah, but his name is Jeremy, a radio talk show host. He's a producer. He's a writer. Does a lot of good good things. What a great team I have. Cedra, Jeremy, Hannah, making things happen. And in the operations and management, we've got Jim and Jonathan. I could name them all. I just love my family. That's all. American Family Radio. I appreciate that. That was very nice. See, Cedra's in my ear. She just said, well, we we put up with you. No, she's I'm kidding. Am I? You must be a tyrant to work for. I don't work. It's not about four. It's with, and that's why we're part of a team. See a team. 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 When I'm thinking of this is we're all on the same team as Americans without hyphens, right? We don't do hyphens. We're Americans equal under the law. When we see somebody dressed in sheets and burning a small T, we have that same visceral reaction. We want a fire hose. <laughs> and... <laughs> Well, probably have to go to our better angels on that one. But there is a visceral emotional reaction. Or we just see the absurdity of it and we turn off Jerry Springer. Good plan. Same thing with Black Panthers or Westboro Baptist Church. But digression. digression. Here's the idea. Now, obviously, in the body of Christ, from a Christian worldview, we want to transform our culture. Now, we have disagreements in the Christian community on how to do that. I'm a disciple in progress, doing the best I can with my shaped head, but I'll tell you something. I know that each and every one of us, those are that would identify themselves as I do, as a disciple in progress, a Christian saved by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His grace, say it pointing up, not down or at to those who may not know the Lord yet. And if you don't know the Lord, hey, welcome to the table. You lock in AFR, you're going to get some great teaching. We have pastors, Bert Harper, Dr. Alex McFarland, you know, B-Man Fisher, pastor. You'll be locked in. I'm glad you're here. But I think that there are those, in fact, the vast majority of us want the truth. And even if it doesn't sound good, we want the truth. And what gets me is what Cheryl Atkinson was talking about was the idea of clouding the water so we can't see it. Did you miss that clip? Perhaps we should go back and just play that once again. Cheryl Atkinson speaking to the AstroTurf media fake grassroots, as well as the overall commentary where you can plug this in to distorting things being someone who's adding information or taking information away or demonizing somebody to distort, not for a clear picture, not for the advancement of the truth. Roll it. The whole point of AstroTurf is to try to give the impression there's widespread support for or against an agenda when there's not. AstroTurf seeks to manipulate you into changing your opinion by making you feel as if you're an outlier when you're not. AstroTurfers seek to controversialize those who disagree with them. They attack news organizations that publish stories they don't like, whistleblowers who tell the truth, politicians who dare to ask the tough questions, and journalists who have the audacity to report on all of it. Sometimes astroturfers simply shove intentionally so much confusing and conflicting information into the mix that you're left to throw up your hands and disregard all of it, including the truth. Drown out a link between a medicine and a harmful side effect, say vaccines and autism, by throwing a bunch of conflicting paid-for studies, surveys, and experts into the mix, confusing the truth beyond recognition. Astroturfers tend to reserve all of their public skepticism for those exposing wrongdoing rather than the wrongdoers. 
In other words, instead of questioning authority, they question those who question authority. You might start to see things a little more clearly. It's kind of like taking off your glasses and wiping them and putting them back on and realizing for the first time how foggy they'd been all along. Kind of like defending freedom, making sense out of political nonsense. See, I want everybody to have those clear clarity. Clarity is power. Thank you, Tony Robbins. It's true, though. Get clear. Make an informed decision. I'm glad you tolerate me, even though many of you might disagree with me from time to time. Thank you. You don't have to accept. I'm not the left. You don't have to accept what I have to say or my point of view. In fact, investigate it. But what I am saying is, one, we're here because of this type of behavior. And have you ever felt like, how on earth did we get here? I mean, we are 18 trillion in the hole. We're not doing the things that government's supposed to be doing. We're exacerbating behavior that government ostensibly policies want to help, want to fix. How did we get here? Come on. Me too. And then we take a good look at our electricity bills and we see, wow, they're going up. But wait, we can generate more with less? What's happening? Well, closing coal plants and demonizing coal and exaggerating the impact, harmful impact it has, while omitting or not detailing or just telling the truth about its benefits. Meanwhile, advancing an idea that's based on junk science, meaning that the, stat- the statistics that they use are corrupted because the methodology that came up behind the study is flawed. It was plugged in to come up with that result. Much like Jonathan Gruber speaks to going to the calculator known as a CBO with certain formulas, even though he knows those are dishonest, but he wants that result because the American people, what are we? We're just too stupid to understand, right? I contend the vast majority of Americans aren't stupid. However, there has been an attempt and an entire movement dedicated to not giving you the rest of the story. The presentation of news as if to say, if you don't vote for onerous regulations that drive up your electricity costs, report that electricity prices rose the fastest rate in six years in 2014. They were up 3.5% from years previous. So as you look at that and you say, oh, well, compared to 2013, the year previous, pardon me. But we've noticed it. So our bills are going and these are bills that we we do everything we can to control, but they're there. And why? Well, there's regulation and there's activity being advanced in the name of global warming, man-made global warming, and man-made climate change. So they point to storms. They don't have the evidence there. They point to coffee, and they say, well, the input's going in. But notice she didn't speak directly to coffee because coffee production is actually going up. And that happens a lot. Gina McCarthy, it happens a lot when it comes to temperature and flatlining and how they came up by distorting how the hottest year on record, but they're... That was a flawed measure. In fact, the Earth's temperature is flatlined over the last 18 years, which really doesn't go well with Man Bear Pig himself, Al Gore. Excuse me, the Earth hath a fever. Yes, it doesn't go well with that. But hey, it's all about advancing an agenda. And that agenda, for those that are knowingly misleading the American people, that's awful. Shame on them. For those people saying, environment, and I want cleaner, greener air and life, wonderful, it's great. How do you do that, and what's the cost-benefit analysis? Because I love nature. I hug trees. Yay. I believe in dominion, and I believe in taking care of this earth, but not at the expense of my liberty, and especially not under the guise of voting for something that will take over the means of production and add so much cost 
and you have to lie about what you have as science and call it consensus science. What? Hypothesis proved or not proved? What do you mean consensus? Consensus science. It's politicization of science to do that. And then you'll ridicule them and make them feel like they're alone. And how absurd could they be for daring to question? Well, Senator Inhofe is, to me, right on. And Mark Morano, who used to work with Senator Inhofe, in fact, over Climate Depot, has it right. And if you want balanced coverage when it comes to environmental issues, specific, I could speak to the general as well. Well, Chris Woodward was a business environment reporter, and he gets both sides when it comes to these things. So, top of the hour news. American Family Radio. So with all that in mind, I give you Gina McCarthy once again talking about the environment and regulations, coffee, and how it became a national security measure too. Roll it. Because treating the environment as window dressing when it is an essential part of the brick and mortar of our lives and our economies is not a strategy for the future. The good news is, there are existing technologies and low-cost strategies that can leapfrog all old ways of industrialization and move us towards a low-carbon, sustainable future. Now, that's the second point I want to make. Climate action isn't just a moral responsibility we must accept. It's an economic opportunity that we can seize to sharpen our global competitive edge, to strengthen international ties, and to catalyze global action. So it's no surprise that according to the American Security Project, 70% of the world's countries explicitly call climate change a national security concern. Okay, well, how many of those countries are getting the redistributed wealth that this is? The entire scheme. How many of those countries? Would you vote for it and you're one of those countries that desperately needs money and they say, oh, it doesn't really cost us? But I'm sitting here at Solyndra and I'm realizing that, hey, this really doesn't work out. And by the way, if there are wonderful technologies and the market will discover them, I believe in the free market over a crony capitalist government. I'm tired of that. Stop trying to direct my tax dollars. And, and, and for that matter, with the national security thing, this bothers me on all fronts, and there are people I respect who believe that, that in this connection. I can understand the connection, but not really the causation, and that is this. I want us to produce more oil, absolutely, and put those petro-terrorist regimes like Iran out of business, yay, and Saudi Arabia for that matter. I go down the line. But I, I, I do want to make this clear. One, gas prices are down despite President Obama's policies, who's cut back on land for drilling for oil and for natural gas. He's done that. But we've seen a great increase in North Dakota, and we've seen that increase the amount. Pipelines are more secure as opposed to rail, so Keystone Pipeline, but they're not really in, in, interested in that. But oil is a world commodity. If you really want to concentrate on national security, then take care of our troops, dedicate, change the paradigm that we have, the current model of our economy, which is entitlements 60 plus percent, and then 18 to 23 percent is U.S. military. Don't make deals that put our national security in jeopardy like sequester, though the benefits have been seen and you can always save money in government. I'm talking about the fact that get the government out of the welfare state and don't give up your freedom when it comes to your years retired where you're not producing as much, but you're relying on the government for your health care and a piece or all of your retirement. What a ridiculous bargain. What a ridiculous idea. What a ridiculous concept. That's what's happened. And certainly there are those who have pointed that out in the past. Ronald Reagan was one of them. Ronald Reagan spoke about how socialized medicine took over, how we got to where we are. And it was truly before it all manifested fully. Ronald Reagan said this. Roll it. 
One of the traditional methods of imposing statism or socialism on a people has been by way of medicine. It's very easy to disguise a medical program as a humanitarian project. Most people are a little reluctant to oppose anything that suggests medical care for people who possibly can't afford it. Now, the American people, if you put it to them about socialized medicine and gave them a chance to choose, would unhesitatingly vote against it. We had an example of this under the Truman administration. It was proposed that we have a compulsory health insurance program for all people in the United States, and of course, the American people unhesitatingly rejected this. So with the American people on record as not wanting socialized medicine, Congressman Ferrand introduced the Ferrand Bill. This was the idea that all people of Social Security age should be brought under a program of compulsory health insurance. Now this would not only be our senior citizens, this would be the dependents and those who are disabled, this would be young people if they are dependents of someone eligible for Social Security. Now, Congressman Ferrand brought the program out on that idea of just for that particular group of people. But Congressman Ferrand was subscribing to this foot-in-the-door philosophy because he said, if we can only break through and get our foot inside the door, then we can expand the program after that. Walter Ruther said, it's no secret that the United Automobile Workers is officially on record as backing a program of national health insurance. And by national health insurance, he meant socialized medicine for every American. Well, let's see what the socialists themselves had to say about it. They say, once the Ferrand bill is passed, this nation will be provided with a mechanism for socialized medicine capable of indefinite expansion in every direction until it includes the entire population. Well, we can't say we haven't been warned. And we were warned, and it happens, but that's incrementalism. The nose under the tent, and then eventually the tail. It's how it's introduced, and the truth about what it really does. It does a lot of good, good things. What a great team I have. Cedra, Jeremy, Hannah, making things happen. And in the operations and management, we've got Jim and Jonathan. I could name them all. I just love my family. That's all. American Family Radio. I appreciate that. That was very nice. See, Cedra's in my ear. She just said, well, we, we put up with you. No, she's, I'm kidding. Am I? You must be a tyrant to work for. I don't work. It's not about for. It's with, and that's what we're part of a team. See a team. 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 You're getting Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth on AFR Talk. So, Gina McCarthy, what were you doing? The Backstreet? What's going on? Welcome back. Great to be with you. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, part two of what we just spoke about with, with Cheryl Atkinson. Well, she was actually giving a lecture, and we played a clip from it and put together some clips. Wonderfully produced by our good friend, Jeremy. I want to say Jeremiah, but his name is Jeremy, a radio talk show host. He's a producer, he's a writer, a Christian, saved by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His grace, say it pointing up, not down or at. To those who may not know the Lord yet. And if you don't know the Lord, hey, welcome to the table. You lock in AFR, you're going to get some great teaching. We have pastors, Bert Harper, Dr. Alex McFarland, you know, B-Man Fisher, pastor. You'll be locked in. I'm glad you're here. But I think that there are those when I'm thinking of this is we're all on the same team as Americans without hyphens, right? We don't do hyphens. We're Americans equal under the law. When we see somebody dressed in sheets and burning a small tea, we have that same visceral reaction. We want a fire hose. <laughs> and, well, probably have to go to our better angels on that one. But there is a visceral emotional reaction. Or we just see the absurdity of it and we turn off Jerry Springer. Good plan. Same thing with Black Panthers or Westboro Baptist Church. But digression. digression. Here's the idea. Now, obviously, in the body of Christ... 
from a Christian worldview, we want to transform our culture. Now, we have disagreements in the Christian community on how to do that. I'm a disciple in progress, doing the best I can with my shaped head, but I'll tell you something. I know that each and every one of us, those are that would identify themselves as I do as a disciple in progress, 